brothers, sisters, and brothers, Amy Wilson Feltz here, the pastor at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso. It is such a joy to be with you this morning on this Memorial Day weekend, Sunday. We are coming to you live here from the Parsonage at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here. Let us know that you are here so that Misha and I can greet you this morning. And as you are connecting this morning, we would love to hear stories of the people that you are honoring this weekend. So if you have somebody that you're remembering or honoring, someone who has served in the military, we would love to remember them with you this morning. So feel free to share those stories in the comments. And also we have a place on our Facebook page that we set up yesterday where you can share those stories as well. Good morning, Pop. We're glad that you are here. As you all are connecting this morning, remember our easy access links. You can fill out our connect form so that we can connect with each other beyond Sunday mornings. You can also connect to our giving link, which takes you to our online giving options. It is so important to continue to give to your local church, whether that be St. Paul's or another local church, because our churches continue to grow and to serve and to adapt during this time. So if you would like to support our mission to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others, you are so welcome to do that. Good morning. Welcome. We're glad that you all are here. Good morning, Betty. Glad that you're here this morning. If you all have some people that you would like to remember this morning, people who have served in our military branches, you are welcome to share those in the comments. We would love to see stories and photos. I myself am giving thanks this morning for my grandfather, my mother's father, Marianne Masters, who served in the Navy during the Korean War. He is actually buried at Fort Bliss, and so it's nice to be close to his final resting place at this time in my life. We also want to remember two of my great uncles, my father's uncles, J.T. Scurlock and Daryl McDuffie, who both served in the Army in World War II. We are grateful for their service. And so if you have somebody that you would like to remember this morning, feel free to share that so that we can remember together. Because we're actually going to talk about the importance of remembering as a group of people this morning as we continue in our sermon series, which we are calling I Believe. Today we're going to talk about the importance of believing in remembrance, and we're going to turn to Psalm 77 to help us do that. So I invite you to get your Bible so that you have that with you if you have that available. If not, you can listen as I read. That's perfectly acceptable as well. But this is a great time as we are connecting to take a deep breath, to center our hearts for worship this morning. I'd like to read to you now from Psalm 77. We will read verses 1 through 12. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, so that God might hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying, and my soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has God's steadfast love ceased forever? Are God's promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has God's anger shut up God's compassion? I say it is my grief. It is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord, I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all of your work and muse on your mighty deeds. This is the word of God for the people of God. So together we say, thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be pleasing in your sight this morning, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Again, good morning. If you are just joining us, thank you so much for sharing your remembrances. Terry, David, thank you so much. We are so glad to be able to remember with you. And we are talking about remembrance this morning. So I really like to hear Jason, my spouse, retell some stories that are significant moments in our life. I love to hear him tell the story of the day that we met. I love to hear him tell the story of the night that he proposed and of the mornings that each of our kids came to us and entered into our lives. I love to hear him tell those stories. I remember those stories clearly too, of course. They're important memories remembrances for me. They're important memories of mine as well. I remember the dress that I was wearing on the day that Jason and I met. I remember being surprised and, and thrilled at the timing of his proposal as we shared a picnic dinner one evening. I remember being in awe of him as he gave Natalie her first bottle in the ICU at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. I remember urging him to take Augie and to go with him when Augie was removed from the operating room, but I had to stay on the morning that he was born. I remember seeing tears roll down his face when we were listening for Olivia's first cry on the morning that she was born. All of those memories are important to me and I cherish them, but I remember them differently than my sweet husband does. He's the romantic in the family. And so he remembers the, the day that we met. He remembers the wind blowing my hair and hearing the song Dreamweaver play in the background in his head. <laughs> he remembers fumbling the ring when he proposed because his palms were so sweaty at the thought that I might actually agree to be his wife. He remembers the weight of the drive home from Dallas, that three hour drive with me in the back seat with Natalie, this beautiful infant who was still recovering from third degree burns. He remembers having an unexpected 20 minutes with Augie to himself while I was still in the operating room. He remembers cuddling and singing with Augie. He remembers holding my hand and touching my face as we waited for that first beautiful cry of Olivia's to ring in our ears. So I love to hear Jason tell the stories of our life together, and it's not because I don't remember them. It's because we remember them differently, and together, together we remember them fully. We can experience that same type of fullness of remembering in our biblical text, because remembrance for the ancient Hebrew people was a spiritual discipline. Remembrance for the Jewish culture, even today, is a corporate experience. Remembrance for a community of faith speaks both to the identity of the people and to the faithfulness of God. There's a good reason for this too, because our individual human memories are not exactly reliable on their own. What we remember is often skewed by our emotions at the time, our experiences since, and also what we wish could have been or even could be today. And sisters and brothers, it is doubly difficult to remember clearly in times of distress. That's why the emphasis on remembering as a group of people is such a beautiful thing. And that's one reason that we actually in, insist and encourage people to participate in the sacraments of Holy Communion and of baptism in community, in a corporate worship space whenever possible, because those acts of grace really need to be experienced with other people. They remind us that everybody is in need of God's grace and that God's love is available to all. And isn't that something, Libby, that we all need to remember every now and then? And that's also what makes our holy text and particularly the Psalms, which we are reading this morning, such a valuable resource for us. 
Now the Psalms can be found almost directly in the middle of any Bible translation. This is something that we learned early as children. It's something that our dad taught us that if you take your Bible and you open it up pretty much in any translation and you're going to find the Psalms in the middle. And these are poems that are written in the vividly descriptive Hebrew language and they were often set to music for worship. They were the first hymns of the people of God. And they share different experiences because these 150 poems, they were written by different people and they make up five smaller books that compose what we know as the book of Psalms in our Old Testament. And so if we read that book from cover to cover, we would find different types of Psalms. We would find Psalms of praise, Psalms of thanksgiving, Psalms of lament and grief, and Psalms that offer continual praise to God. And even within a single Psalm, we find differences in genre sometimes. And that's true of the Psalm that we read this morning, Psalm 77. I would love right now if you want to share some of your favorite Psalms, we would love to share those this morning and remember together. But Psalm 77, the one that we read this morning, is often considered to be a Psalm of lament, a Psalm of grief. And we just read some of those verses this morning and probably some of them are still resonating in our minds because they're so descriptive. Verses 1 through 10 are charged with emotion. They're charged with sorrow and grief and distress, but we see the psalm begin to take a turn where we stopped reading in verses 11 and 12. And they hinge, that turn hinges on that really important word in verse 11, remember. So the writer of this psalm may have been a man named Asaph, who was a singer and a seer in the court of King David. And this writer feels alone, feels abandoned, with a heart so heavy with grief that he cannot be comforted. He can't sleep. He doesn't want to speak. But he can't stop himself because these questions keep bubbling up and they won't give him any relief. He can't stop himself from asking, will God turn away from me forever? Does God no longer love me? Has God broken all promises? Has God's grace come to an end? Has God's anger overtaken God's compassion? In other words, this writer is asking, why am I feeling so desperate? Because he is desperate. And we don't know what has brought him to that state of being, but one of the beautiful things about the Psalms in general is that they make the inner life public. They make the inner life public, not in an expression or experience of humiliation, but in an expression and experience of humanity of humility even. So perhaps we as individuals find it difficult sometimes to express our sorrow like this, to really wrestle with our grief and our distress and admit our feelings on this kind of level, to ask such difficult questions of God with such depth of emotion. But we can read a psalm, right? We can read this psalm, we can read Psalm 77 and let it resonate with our own experiences as we come face to face with our sorrow and our grief and our anger and our fear. And then, then verse 11 invites us to remember. So we're going to pick it up here and read the rest of the psalm. We stopped in verse 12, but we're going to back up again to verse 11 and read through verse 20. So if you're reading along, you can read with me in your own Bibles. Verse 11 says, I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord, and I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all of your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. Whose God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You are the God who displays your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Joseph and Jacob. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water and the heavens resounded with your thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. 
Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. Your lightning lit up the world and the earth trembled and quaked. And your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And once again, this is the word of God for the people of God. And we say together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This is Psalm 77. And I look forward to, to going back and reading Psalm 37 again, Bob, and the other Psalms that are being mentioned here. But this is Psalm 77. And it seems like there is an abrupt shift to go from the statement of grief, our God has changed to this statement of, I will remember your wonders of old. And we see that happen in the span of just two verses. So everything, as I said, pivots on that word, remember. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on your work. I will muse on your mighty deeds. Pay attention to the tense there. I will remember. I will meditate. I will muse. And then just like that, the tense of the language shifts to the present. Your ways are holy, God. Your ways are holy, God. It's a light bulb moment. It doesn't erase the pain and the grief and the sorrow of the writer, but it takes that pain and that grief and that sorrow and it places it in the larger context of God's faithfulness, God's miracles, God's power, God's redemption, all of those things are listed in the psalm. Verses 15 through 20 actually speak of a very specific moment in the history of the people of Israel. The waters in verse 16 are very specific waters. They are the waters of the rivers that stood between the people of God and their freedom from Pharaoh in Egypt who had enslaved them. He was actually on their heels in that very moment, trying to recapture them and enslave them once again. And the waters, we are told, writhed. They convulsed at the sight of God, the writer says, in one of the most poetic tellings that we have of this epic tale that we can find in Exodus chapter 14. So if you want to read the original telling, you can see it, 14, but it's being retold here in the poetry of the psalm. The waters writhed and convulsed. The clouds poured with water. Thunder resounded in the sky. Lightning lit up the world. The earth quaked, sisters and brothers, and then a path emerged. A path emerged through the waters, yet still on dry ground. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And this is where the psalm ends. And ends with the telling of the story. There's no additional proclamation of the goodness of God here. There's no exclamation of the faithfulness of God beyond the retelling of the story. This epic moment of God's making a way literally where there seemed to be no way stands on its own here, but the implications linger. If you've done this once before, again, many times before, you can do it again. You will do it again. In fact, we know that to be true when we look at the biblical text as a whole, we see a pattern of God's behavior emerge, where God hears the cries of the people, God sees the suffering of the people, and God is moved to do something about that. God is moved to save them. And not only do we see that pattern of behavior, we hear tell of it over and over again as these stories of deliverance are retold in the community of faith to help the people remember the nature of the God that we serve. Someone, in fact, must have told the writer of Psalm 77 this story of the deliverance of the people in Egypt because he lived 400 years after it happened. He wasn't there to experience it himself. But undoubtedly, this story, which is so critical to the identity of the people and the understanding of the faithfulness of God, was retold 
to this writer over and over again to teach him an important lesson. So sisters and brothers, a remembrance of God's movement in the past, a remembrance of God's movement in the past points to the reliability of God's faithfulness in the present and in the future. A remembrance of God's movement in the past points to the reliability of God's faithfulness in the present and in the future. And that's why texts like the Psalms, even Psalm 23, like the one you just recently mentioned, Bob, that's why they are so important for our faith formation. Can I get an amen, Kathy Jewell? These Psalms are important for our faith formation. That's why rituals like reciting the creeds that we talked about last week are so critical for us to help us examine the faithfulness of God in our own lives. That's why they've been retained in our tradition for so long. And it helps us gain a broader perspective from the community of faith, broader than the one that we could have on our own. As individuals, we may remember what we have been taught about God and what we have experienced of God well. We may remember it well, but we may remember it differently than other people. But together, we can remember these things fully. Together, we can have a fuller picture of the faithfulness of God than we remember as a community of faith. And that's the hope of the sermon series that we are calling, I Believe, that it will teach us the importance of remembrance as a corporate experience, allowing the act of remembrance to bring us back to what we know about ourselves and about our God. And Memorial Day weekend is a great time for us to do that as we are remembering the story of our country as a whole and the story of our families and the story of individuals that we feel are so important as we give thanks for those who have lived and dived bravely to make a way for us. As we remember those who have lived and died bravely to make a way for us at times where there seemed to be no way as we give thanks for the women and the men who continue to serve in our military branches as well. So sisters and brothers, I have some guesses based on our current global situation, but I don't know for sure what waters are raging in your own lives right now. I don't know in what circumstances you desperately need a hidden path to emerge so that you can make it safely to the other side. I don't know from what nightmare you need deliverance right now. I don't know all of those details. I would be glad to walk with you through them if you want to contact me later. But what I do know, regardless, is that God is faithful in times of grief and distress. And I know that God's faithful is so consistent throughout the ages, sisters and brothers, that I cannot remember it all myself. It's too vast. It takes a community of faith that spans generations, millennia even, to remember in that detail. So it is my hope and my prayer for all of us that we will choose to believe. That we can choose to believe in that kind of longevity and remembrance, trusting that our individual memories and the memories of our community and the memories of our tradition are beautiful parts of that same epic whole reminding us that it is okay that we may remember what we have learned and experienced about God differently because together we can remember God fully. Together we can remember God fully. That is truly a blessing for us today because it is in the fullness of the memory of our faith that we can come to say, even in the midst of debilitating fear and grief and mind-numbing questions, your ways are holy, God. Your ways are still holy, God. For whose God is like ours? Amen? Amen. Grace and peace to you, sisters and brothers. We are so glad that you are with us this morning. Carolyn, I see what you are saying there about the volume, so we'll certainly troubleshoot that. Thank you for letting us know. And certainly you should be able to rewatch the sermon on Facebook Live and later on YouTube. And so hopefully we can get.
get that working for you there. Thank you so much for being with us, Yvonne. We're glad that you are here. Again, we would love to continue remembering with you the people that you are celebrating on this Memorial Day weekend. And so please let us know in these comments or in the place that we have designated on our Facebook page, those people that you are remembering, and we will give thanks for them with you. I'm going to hang out on Facebook and on my phone for a little bit this morning. So if you want to connect for any reason, you can send me a private message or you can text message me or call me and I'll be happy to connect with you that way. We look forward to being with you again next week as we talk about the work of the Holy Spirit and we celebrate the day of Pentecost as we do in our tradition. So again, thank you so much for being with me and we look forward to being with you again. We're going to share these words of benediction before we go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you would abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer who loves us very much. Amen. Go in peace, sisters and brothers, and be well. See you soon.